In this lesson, we are going to learn how to determine the limit of a piecewise function. Now, given the piecewise function f of x, the limit of this function exists if and only if the left-hand limit is equal to the right-hand limit. So let's assume that we want to find the limits of a piecewise function f of x as x approaches 0. Now, first of all, we need to find the left-hand limit. Now, for the left-hand limit, that is given by the limit of f of x as x approaches 0 from the left. And let's assume that, in this case, the left-hand limit is equal to a value, say, L. Next, we find the right-hand limit. That is given by the limit of the function f of x as x approaches 0, this time, from the right. Now, if this limit also exists and is equal to L, then what this primarily means is that since the left-hand limit is equal to the right-hand limit, the general limit of this function as x approaches 0 also exists and that is equal to L. Now, the left-hand limit means that considering the number line where you have 0, the left-hand limit means that you want to approach 0 from the left. So you want to move from the left approaching 0. That is the left-hand limit. And then for the right-hand limit, you move from the right approaching 0. Now the left-hand limit is called a one-sided limit. The right-hand limit is also called a one-sided limit. Whereas the general limit of the function is called a two-sided limit simply because it considers the limits from both sides. Notice that if the left-hand limit is not equal to the right-hand limit, then the general limit of the function f of x as x approaches 0 does not exist. Now let's try a couple of examples. So given the piecewise function f of x equals e where x is greater than negative 4 e plus ln 2 where negative 7 is less than x is less than or equal to negative 4. Now if you want to find the limit of this function as x approaches negative 7, negative 4, and 0. Now, how do we do this? First of all, let's define the domain for each of the functions in the piecewise function. So, for x greater than negative 4, it means that we start from negative 4, so open bracket negative 4, and then greater than negative 4, so negative 4, negative 3, through 2, positive infinity. And then for negative 7, less than x, that is open bracket, negative 7, less than or equal to negative 4. So negative 4, close bracket. Now to find the domain of the whole piecewise function, the least value on the left is negative 7. So open bracket negative 7. The greatest value on the right is positive infinity. So this is the overall domain for the piecewise function. Now considering this function, when x approaches negative 7, we are going to find the left-hand limit as well as the right hand limit. So for the left hand limit, that is given by the limit of the function as x approaches negative 7 from the left. 
Now, negative 7 from the left means that we are going to consider values that are less than negative 7. Now, considering this domain, we have negative 7 here, which means that we are going to focus on this function. So that is the limit as x approaches negative 7 from the left of e plus ln 2. Now, approaching negative 7 from the left cannot be found in this domain. We are talking about values that are less than negative 7 and that is not in this domain. Therefore, the limit of this function as x approaches negative 7 from the left does not exist. So the limit does not exist. Now to the right hand limit, we have the limit as x approaches negative 7 this time from the right. Now from the right means that we are going to consider values that are greater than negative 7. Now values greater than negative 7 are found in this domain. This contains values that are greater than negative 7 approaching negative 7. So we are going to use the function e plus ln2. Notice that this domain starts from negative 4 through to positive infinity. Now we don't have values very close to negative 7 in here. Therefore, we focus on this function. So since we are not going to input or plug in any value of x, it means that the limit of this function as x approaches negative 7 from the right is still e plus ln2. Now since the left hand limit is not equal to the right hand limit, it means that the general limit of the function f of x as x approaches negative 7 does not exist. Now let's move on to the limit of the function as x approaches negative 4. So first of all, let's consider the left hand limit. Now, approaching negative 4 from the left means that we are going to consider values that are less than negative 4. Now, values less than negative 4 are found in this domain. We have this to be negative 4 and then values less than negative 4 are negative 5, negative 6 and so on and so forth. Now, these values are found in here. So, we are going to use this function. So, that is the limit of e plus ln2. And that is equal to e plus ln2 because we are not going to plug in any value of x in this function. So this is the limit of the function from the left hand side. Now for the right hand limit, that is where x approaches negative 4 from the right. Negative 4 from the right means that we are going to consider values that are greater than negative 4. Now, values that are greater than negative 4 are found in here. So, we are going to use the function e. So, that is the limit of e as x approaches negative 4 from the right. And that is equal to e. Here also, since the left hand limit is not equal to the right hand limit, the general limit of the function f of x as x approaches negative 4 does not exist. Now, for x approaching 0, for the left hand limit, Approaching 0 from the left means that we consider values that are less than 0. Now, values that are less than 0 are found in this domain. 
we have negative 4 through to positive infinity. In this domain, we can find values that are closer to 0 from the left hand side. So we are going to use this function. And that is equal to e. Now for the right hand limit, considering values that are greater than 0 but very close to 0, we still are going to consider this domain, therefore this function and it's still equal to e. Now for this case, since the left hand limit is equal to the right hand limit, it means that the general limit of the function f of x as x approaches 0 exists and that is equal to e. Now let's move on to the next example. So for example 2, let's say we are given the function, the piecewise function f of x equals x plus 3 where x is less than 0, negative x plus 3 where x is greater than or equal to 0 and we want to find the limits of this piecewise function as x approaches 0. So let's find the left hand limit. So that is given by the limit as x approaches 0 from the left. Now approaching 0 from the left means that we are looking out for values that are less than 0. And values less than 0 corresponds to the function x plus 3. So we have x plus 3. Now let's plug in 0 into this limit. We have 0 plus 3 and that is equal to 3. Now for the right hand limit, that is given by the limit as x approaches 0 from the right. Now 0 from the right means that we are approaching 0 but this time we are approaching 0 from the right. So we are looking out for values that are very close to 0 but greater than 0. So that corresponds to the function negative x plus 3. So negative x plus 3. Let's plug in 0 into this limit. We have negative 0 plus 3 and that is equal to 3. Therefore, since the left hand limit is equal to the right hand limit, it means that the general limit of the function f of x as x approaches 0 exists and that is equal to 3. Now to the last example for today's video, given the function f of x equals x squared minus 2x where x is less than 2, 1, where x is equal to 2, and then x squared minus 6x plus 8, where x is greater than 2. And then we want to find the limits of this function as x approaches 2. So first of all, let's find the left hand limit. So that is given by the limit as x approaches 2 from the left. Now approaching 2 from the left means that we are looking out for values that are less than 2. And values less than 2 are found in this domain which corresponds to this function. So we have x squared minus 2x. Now let's substitute 2 into this limit. We have 2 squared minus 2 times 2 and that is equal to 2 squared is 4, 2 times 2 is 4, 4 minus 4 is 0. Now for f of x equals 1 where x is equal to 2. Now in the previous lessons we said that if you want to find the limit of the function f of x as x approaches a, the function f of x does not necessarily need to be defined when x is equal to a. Now what really matters is how the function is defined 
when x is approaching a either from the left hand side or the right hand side so for this function we are not interested in how the function is defined when x is equal to 2 what we are looking out for is how the function is defined when x is approaching 2 either from the left hand side or the right hand side so we are going to neglect f of x equals 1 where x is equal to 2 so now let's move on to the right hand limit so that is given by the limit as x approaches 2 from the right and then we are focusing on values that are greater than 2 so values greater than 2 fall within this domain and that corresponds to this function so we have x square minus 6x plus 8 so let's plug in 2 here so we have 2 square minus 6 times 2 plus 8 2 square is 4 6 times 2 is 12 and then plus 8 now 4 plus 8 is 12 12 minus 12 is 0 therefore since the left hand limit is equal to the right hand limit the general limit of this function f of x as x approaches 2 exists and that is equal to 0. So that's it for today's video. Thanks for watching and see you in my next video. Bye bye.